I would like to invite you to attend the five-fold ministry discovery conference in San Diego, California on March 31st through April the 2nd, 2022. The host church is South Bay Pentecostal Church in Chula Vista, California, Pastor Arthur Hodges. This conference will focus on the five-fold ministry of Ephesians chapter 4, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Our goal is to discover how we collectively as a team can fulfill this five-fold ministry that's given to the church by Jesus Christ. How can we expand our own personal ministries? How can we work with one another to expand the body of Christ, to fulfill the will of God in the 21st century? I think it will be an exciting time of discovery. It's designated for the Western Zone, but of course, anybody can attend, and we hope that you're able to come. Uh, some of the speakers will be, uh, in addition to me, uh, Stan Gleason, Art Hodges, Doug Kleindentz, Dan Butler, Alan Shaw, Mark Morgan, Gordon Winslow, and Flo Shaw. It should be a wonderful time of teaching, preaching, inspiration, fellowship, and prayer. I hope you can come.
For the Lord is good, and His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. We give you praise and honor, God. Worthy Savior, Almighty God, we give you glory, and we thank you tonight. Hallelujah, for I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in you, O Lord, and the humble shall hear the rob and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked unto him, and they were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed, because this poor man, this poor man, he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard him, and he saved me from all of my troubles. The angel of the Lord, he encamps around them that fear him, and he delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusted in him. We give you glory and honor and praise, for you're worthy, the Lamb for whom sinners were slain. My soul you bought. You are almighty. You are awesome, God. You are beautiful, Lord, God, and comely. You're my delight, Lord, the everlasting Father, faithful, gracious, holy, incomprehensible, the joy of the whole earth. You're king. You're loving. You're merciful. You're near unto all them who put their trust in him. You're omniscient. You're patient. You're the quieter of the trouble of my soul. You're the restorer of the broken the Savior of the whole world. You're trustworthy. You're unparalleled. You're victorious. You're wonderful. You're exalted above all the earth. You're my yes and my amen. The zealous and you are zealous over us, God. And for that we come to give you praise. How great, oh God, you are. How mighty is it and how great is the sum of your thoughts towards us. We praise you and we bless you, God. And we lift you up, oh God, in this house. Lord, let your glory, let it come in as we give you praise. Let your glory shine upon us. Lord, with healing, with signs, with wonders, with miracles tonight, as we give ourselves in full abandonment to you in the fullness of our strength and our worship. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Can you lift him up and praise him in the sanctuary? Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord! Praise ye the Lord! Hallelujah. Let's give a shout of praise unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. I've been asked to pray tonight for those that are leaders, pastors, those that have been physically and financially stressed or pressed by COVID-19. I want to begin with the leadership. If you are a pastor, a youth pastor, a children's pastor, a Sunday school teacher, a home Bible study teacher, a care group leader, a song or a worship leader, would you just lift your hand? If you do something else that I did not name, that you are involved in the ministry of the work of God, would you lift your hand? If you look around you, that's who we're getting ready to pray for right now. Amen. And what I want to pray for is that God would grant to them faith that is unwavering. I also want the Lord to give to them boldness to speak in the Northeast region for the harvest that God is getting ready to do. If you would extend your hand to those leaders that are close to you, let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would grant to them faith, God, that no enemy can take from them. Help their minds and their spirits to be subject to every word that proceeds from your mouth. Let a boldness come over them. Let the word of God come from them that they would speak according to your spirit. They would know, oh God, the direction. They 
and know God what you're trying to do and say in their towns and cities and churches. I pray for a boldness in their life today. I pray that God there would be no fear, no anxiety, oh Lord, no intimidation by the enemy. You have granted us power. Go ahead, pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Grant to them, Jesus, faith to overcome. Faith, God, that would not be subject, oh Lord, to the fears of the enemy. Hallelujah. If you don't mind even putting your hand on them if it's appropriate. And begin to pray for this leadership in Jesus' name. Let the church, oh God, hear, oh Lord, what the Spirit is saying to it right now. This northeast region, it is time for us to have the harvest according to your will. Hallelujah. And everybody shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I've also been asked to pray. And I'd like for you to hear this. I've been asked to pray against anxiety, fear, intimidation, and for healing and sickness. I know that's a mouthful, but as you heard Sister Shostrand say, I believe that the whole church is being tested. The world is being tested. And I've never seen another day where more people are fighting anxiety and sleeplessness than we are today. And I believe that God wants to put that kind of boldness in the apostolic people. That we are no longer intimidated. We're not in fear. But we are in the Holy Ghost. And He's granted to us an open door to speak. So let's pray right now against any kind of sickness and fear and intimidation on all of the people of God in the Northeast. Would you do that right now? You're welcome to reach over and take their hand or put your hand on their shoulder in Jesus' name. God, we come against all sicknesses and diseases and we pray in the name of Jesus over them. We call your name over them. I rebuke intimidation and fear. Help us, God, to mentally and emotionally and spiritually trust in the Lord and to believe that you sent us to our places. We have been called to this hour. In the name of Jesus, I pray against everything, Lord, that would cause us to have these kinds of fears. Let the people of God say yes to His will right now. Let the people of God say yes to Your will right now. In the name of Jesus, release, I pray, my brother and sister in the Lord, to do what You call them to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead and pray for him just for a few more seconds. Just let it be in Jesus' name. No more sleepless nights that are not of you, God. Hallelujah. Let there be rest and peace in the Holy Ghost. We give him peace right now in Jesus' name by the authority of the Holy Ghost. If you would now put your hands together and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Would you do that unto the Lord? You are more than able. You are more than able, oh God, to give us boldness. Praise the Lord. This evening I've been tasked with bringing us together with great purpose. A difficult challenge because everything we are about to go through in the next few moments goes completely against our human nature. We're going to step into a place that we were designed for. Look at your neighbor and say, what we're going to do, God made me for. Can I get an amen? I need eight volunteers to come quickly. First, I like it. Representative of our district superintendents, I've asked Brother Hansen to come and just stand right here on the platform next to, next to the camera here. Next, I need a church planner that's been in his work for a minimum of three years. He's been in his work for three years. Can I get a hand? Come on down, Brother Keller. Stand right up here on the platform. I need a young man and a young woman to come and to stand with me. So teenagers, do I have a volunteer, somebody, young man, young woman, to come stand here and represent? Come on. Come on. Eleazar, come on down. I need a young lady who will stand here. Yes, ma'am. 
I need a husband and a wife that are here that will stand and represent tonight. A husband and a wife, please come, stand right here. Is there a medical professional in the house, a nurse, a doctor that will come and stand? Please come stand. Is there a banker, a financial investment representative? Would you please come stand? My friends, today, it is impossible for us in our flesh to even comprehend what God wants to do among us this evening. But God is ready to do it tonight. Do you believe it? We can pray and we can say anything that we want to. But today, tonight in this place, we are going to make a declaration. We are going to declare, which means it goes beyond just saying something. It implies that we have authority and power in the words that we use. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat of his fruits. Amen? Are you ready to dine at the master's table tonight? Amen. We're going to make some declarations that need to be made tonight. We are going to speak some things into existence here tonight that need to change the world that we are living in. Amen? I'm going to ask each and every one of you to reach your hand forward towards these individuals as we pray for them. Let's reach towards our representative right here. We're going to pray for every region and the spirit that binds that region. And we're going to declare today victory. Victory in the, in the work that God wants to do. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, right now, God, we declare the victory in every region of New England right now. God, you have the ability to loose the captive, to give deliverance, to bring the sick into a complete health. We've been praying and believing you for these things today. And your people that are called by your name are speaking this tonight into existence. Will you declare it with me right here today? In the name of Jesus, every region, every state, every place, God, that you have put an apostolic person, God, we pray right now that you will do a work and that you will release angels in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Reach your hands towards Brother Keller right now. He represents every man and woman that had made a sacrifice to take the gospel outside of the borders of what we already know to where it needs to go. Amen? This man represents the next generation of truth being shared in the world that we live in. If you'll reach your hands towards him right now and with all of your heart that you would declare that church growth and church plants will find their place with no resistance. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we speak right now, Lord, into the things that you're doing through these young men and women who are out there spreading the gospel. We declare right now that you will bring provision to them, that you would bring to their churches, that you would bring numbers of souls that need this gospel truth. God, we pray over their communities that you would loose them in the community to be influencers, that people would turn to them, people would look to them, people would know that they are the refuge that you have placed there. We believe in you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. These young men and women that stand before us tonight represent 
everything, everything, the words that they speak, the places that they will go, these young people will represent the life and, and, the, and, and, the, and the power of the anointing of the gospel message. If you'll reach your hands towards them right now, this next generation needs our prayers. Amen? Would you declare with me today, God, I declare over the next generation of apostolic young people, God, that you would put an anointing upon their heart, that you would put a word in their mouth, that you would allow the love and the glory of who you are to radiate through them. God, give them the boldness to stand in a world that works against them at every turn. But to today, God, we believe you for the miracle and the extension of the gospel that is going to come out of their life as they commit themselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen. To our married couples, The world would like to see the institution of the covenant of marriage to be destroyed. It's not just about getting together and having a family. It's about expressing the love that Christ has for us in the life that we live together. We are under attack the devil would want to take that from us. But we are apostolic. And we are going to stand for what is right today. Amen? We are not going to waver, but we're going to believe. This couple represents every man and woman that has stood before God and has made a covenant that they are going to do everything that they can to make sure that real, unconditional love is visible to this world. Amen? Let's pray for them right now. Lord Jesus, we declare over the the sanctity of marriage, God, right now that you are going to do a great and mighty work. We're believing you for it. We're trusting you for it. We're believing right now, God, that you're going to keep us together, that you're going to give us stronger communication, that we will be a better representation. We're asking you right now, Lord, that you would protect them, keep them, preserve them, and allow them to shine into a world of darkness, keeping the truth of what you created alive today. In Jesus' name, we believe it. Amen. In the last two years, our medical professionals have come under great attack. They have stood on the front lines and they have given themselves. Some have sacrificed themselves. And we're believing God, amen, that every apostolic man, woman that has ever served in a hospital, stood beside a hospital bed and prayed a prayer under their breath for somebody that has been there will find the victory today, amen? Now, here's what we're going to do. This is a two-part declaration. We're going to declare safety over our medical professionals. Amen? And we're going to declare that they become something that God can use in the weakest hour of somebody's life to come to understand God in His fullness. They're there on the front line for a reason. And they need an anointing like never before to to be able to uh, to do the work that God needs them to do while they're there. Would you reach your hands forward right now? God, I declare right now, Lord, that you would keep our professionals safe and strong. God, that you would keep their health as it is that it is pure as the day you created them, God. I'm asking you, Lord, God, that you would protect them as they step into places that many cannot go today. But we're believing you for it. We're believing you for it right now. And God, I pray that you would put an evangelistic element inside of them, God, as they hold the hand of those that are sick and pray for them, God, that they will receive the Holy Ghost, God, and they will come to a greater understanding of you in the closing hours of their day. And God, we give you praise for what you're going to do. 
in Jesus' name. And last but not least, money. You got the tough one. But God and his institution made money a very important thing. It's because it's the way that we can propagate the gospel and get that message out. Amen? Come on, pastors. We need money. And God's got it. So let's stop believing that God doesn't have what we need to get the job done. Amen? We don't have to wait for the month check to come in. We don't have to wait for that. We can pray right now. And we can believe God for the miracle right now. Because money is not a problem for God. Money's a problem for us. Amen? So will you believe God with me right now as we declare? God, right now, as we stand before you, many with empty pockets, we pray right now, Lord God, that you would bless your people with the great abundance of your kingdom as we shine down today. And we ask you right now, Lord God, that finance would be have no limitations in the efforts of developing the kingdom of God here on earth. Bless every pastor. Bless every church. Bless every saint as they trust you and believe you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all may be seated. Last but not least, we're about to embark upon the opening of the Word of God tonight. Worship. When His people come together and we lift up His name, we open up floodgates of blessing and anointing that could fill this place. Now, I'm not for sure what you came for tonight, but I came so that I can visit with my Lord and Savior. Amen? And I'm believing God for a great visitation tonight. And I hope you are too. God, we love you and we thank you. And we declare that you have all of the liberty in this place tonight as we open our hearts and our minds to you. Come on, why don't you rise to your feet and lift up your hands as we're expecting the rain to fall in this house tonight. The Bible declares in Zechariah chapter 10 and 1 to ask you of the Lord for rain in the time of latter rain. Can somebody just lift up your hands and say, God, release the rain tonight. Come on, the former rain and the latter rain. Come on, can you lift up your voice in the room like a trumpet in Zion? Lift up your shout. Come on, lift up your worship and say, God, open up the heavens. Come on, we're worshiping under an open heaven tonight and the atmosphere is pregnant with expectation for miracles, signs, and wonders. Come on, lift your hands because these signs shall follow them that believe. Are there any believers in the room that can open up your mouth and say, release the rain. Oh, release the rain, Jesus. Come on, put those hands together in the room. Come on, lift up a shout in the room with expectation. Come on, can you lift up a shout? Hallelujah. We're ready for a downpour. Let it fall fresh. Let it fall fresh on us. We're ready. For revival, let it fall fresh and let it fall fresh on us. It's coming down and it's pouring out. The time is now. We need the rain. We need the rain. Come on, put your hands together in the room. Everybody say, We need the rain. We need the rain. Ooh, oh, oh. Say, we need the rain. We need the rain. The former rain and the latter rain. Say, we need the rain. We need the rain. Oh, oh, oh. Now, right here, everybody clap your hands in the room. I need some worshipers in the room that would free up in the Holy Ghost. As we give God praise for the rain. Hey. 
to lift up a shout in the room. Say, we need to raise.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. You can return to your seats. Be seated for just a, a few brief moments, I'm sure. Glory a Dios. No habla espanol. But if you're sitting next to someone who does or is in need of translation, they can make your way to the area right on the balcony behind the sound booth, not in the sound booth. And someone will be there to help you. And there's some ear pieces and translation happening. We want to accommodate our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. It is such an honor to pastor in a city called New Haven, Connecticut. I felt Jesus right there. When we came to start Haven of Hope, we were so welcomed by so many and so many that have dug that ground up to make it so much easier for Haven of Hope to be birthed. And one of those individuals is our next speaker. Are you ready? He's the senior pastor of Beulah Heights First Pentecostal Church in New Haven, Connecticut. He's here tonight with his family, his two sons who I have grown to love and appreciate. We would be amiss if we didn't mention First Lady, Janice Brooks, the love of his life, his bride. I got a feeling the one that makes it all happen. Winterfire Congregation, would you welcome the presiding bishop of the Pentecostals Assemblies of the World, Bishop Brooks, would you come preach the word, Bishop? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The song says, oh, how I love Jesus. I got anybody in here that loves the Lord tonight? God, I love you. Now I need to tell you, I make up songs. I just hear music and I make it up. And I'm here to make, God, I love you. Yes, I do. For there's nobody like you in all the world, my God. You are my friend my hope, my joy, and you're my peace, my comfort, my all in all, and God, I love you, I love you, I love you, yes I do. All right, I'm through. See, when you get to be a certain age, you can do that. I'm honored to be here tonight. I'm thankful to the Lord that the Lord allowed me to come. I texted Brother Pastor Pakowski earlier today, and I said, I have about an inch of ice and snow on my driveway. I don't know if I can make it. I'm waiting for the man to come plow it. He's not here yet. And I figured he would text me back and says, we understand. <laughs> Brother texted me back and said, we're believing by faith. What's your subject? What's your scripture? I was sitting across my bed and I had to laugh. I said, well, Lord, I don't know why I'm, I'm here. All of the fine preachers you have and to my esteemed colleague, the Honorable Superintendent, the Bishop of all, Dr. Bernard. 
We appreciate you, sir. I would be remiss. Rick, I love you. Don, you know I love you, but there's a tall guy that came out, I believe, Montana, who we just connected. We don't see each other too often, but he is my brother from another mother, the Honorable Pastor John Hanson. Love you, my brother. Certain people you meet that make an impression on you, and he showed me great love and great respect when we first met, and I don't forget people that treat me well. Amen, I'm appreciative of that. Uh, Brother Ricky, you made one mistake. I am Pastor Emeritus. I retired on December 31st. Praise God. What a blessing. After 35 years and my son, Pastor Harold Brooks, step out, son, took over from me. My eldest son is here, uh, Elder Ted Brooks and his wife. Pastor Harold has his wife and my granddaughter, my, my, my. And then Rick was right, but I call her my girlfriend. April 30th, we will celebrate the beginning of 56 years. I would break out with another song, but y'all be like, you ain't saved. <laughs> I've been asking God for the last two weeks, why am I here? Y'all may be seated. And I say that because I do not take it for granted or lightly when asked to bring the word of God before the great people of God. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm content as I do every Sunday, unless he asks me to speak. I come in, I sit in my chair, I cross my legs, and I listen to Pastor Harold deliver the word of God. And I sit there and chuckle to myself and just laugh. Not laughing at him, but it's just laughter of joy to see the anointing of God falling on him and him sharing the word of God. I'm still not quite sure why I'm here. I'm still not quite sure why I'm here. But there is a word from God, I pray. In the book of Proverbs, I mean, yeah, Proverbs, the eighth chapter, just one verse, verse number 17. It reads this, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find. the prophet, the preacher, the king is speaking as an oracle of God. As he's speaking in the voice of God and he says, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Father, I pray that you'll bless your servant for a few moments. You know, God, you got to bring up these words. Shabbat. God, I praise you. Because if you don't do it, it shall not be done. For this, I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share with you tonight three words the God seekers, the God seekers. Beloved, I am not quite sure 
how many of us really understand the time that we are in? I'm not sure if we clear, if we are clear about where we are at and what is going on in the world. There's so much happening in the world and so many things that are going on until sometimes people get caught up in what is happening in the day and forget what's really going on in the spiritual world. There is a warfare, and you are the target. But what you got to understand is that God is still on our side. This world is just mixed up and crazy as lunatics that are walking the hallways of everywhere. People are just bizarre in their mind. Governments are just doing crazy things. I got a text, one of our bishops, he's over the ECN, Eastern uh, Council, the European Council of Nations, and uh, we have, what to my surprise, I knew we had a work in Ukraine, but did not know that we had 11 churches in there. And the pastor has to flee because of the Russian army that's coming in and overtaking them and really causing them to fear for their lives. And so we call for prayer and we're assisting them and helping them to transition over into Romania and to try to be safe for a while. And they can go back in and pull more people out and we're sending food over and money over to be able to help them. That's something, that's, that, 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 that's something we see on the news and we look at it and we wonder. But then as I look around, everything else is changing. The weather pattern is changing. You don't know what to wear when you get up in the morning. You look at the news and the other day it was 60 degrees. And now we got this sleet and snow. It's going to be warmer later on in the week. Everything is changing. The pressures of life are phenomenal. More young people, I stood here today and I watched all the young people were over here worshiping and praising God. And, and I commend, first of all, I commend the parents for being able to bring them to that stage of their life and encouraging them to give God praise. Because we have more young people who are committing suicide than ever before. We have more people who are distressed and losing their minds because they're trying to go on their own philosophy, their own ideas and way that they think and failing to understand that God is still God. I don't care, and I told someone, I don't care who occupies the White House. I don't care who's in the Kremlin. I don't care who's over in Spain. I don't care who's in England. I serve a God who is in control. I don't know about you, but I'm not worried about the economy. Folk look at the stock market and they get all upset and they get all worried. I care less about the stock market. I got stock in God. That's where I got stock. I got, I got some shares with the Almighty. I got some shares to when I, I, I feel like I'm going low. I can go to the rock that is higher than I. When, 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 when I wake up and I don't feel good, my God, I wish I had some praises in the house. I can call upon my God. I, I, I. I heard the brother that was up here praying for all of them. And when he got to the health person, where's that health lady at? Where's that nurse at? There you are, daughter. Yeah, y'all don't understand if you got to save one or someone that knows God. That's What today? Today is what, the 25th on March the 3rd. It would have been a year. Ah, that I was laying in the hospital. I woke up that morning and I, 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 I walked from my room to go downstairs as I normally do to get a cup of coffee. And by the time I got down the steps, eight steps, I was totally out of breath. 
I called my other son, and he's a, a retired firefighter, EMT. And I said, man, something's wrong. You better come down here. I think you need to call the ambulance. They came in, and they checked me, and my, my breathing my, was 81, 82. And they said, you're going to the hospital and threw oxygen on me and brought me in the hospital. I figured, okay, I'm, you know, asthma prone, so I must need an asthma treatment, and I'm going to go back home. And little did I know, hey, man, Pastor Tkowski, when I got in there, uh, the doctor came in, and they took chest x-rays, and they did this, and they did that, and he came back in, and he stood a little far off from me, and he said, sir, we're going to have to operate on you, do emergency surgery. I said, on who? He said, on you. I said, for what? He said, well, you must understand your lungs are filled with blood. And I just looked at him. I couldn't understand it. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on, what's happening. And fear began to grip my heart, Dr. Brother Bernard. And, 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 and I began to wonder. My heart was, I mean, was beating. You're talking about my heart jumping out of my chest. It was beating and, and I was going. But at the same time, my chief intercessor for the organization had sent Pastor Harold a text and me a text. And it said, tell Bishop, I had a dream last night. He was laying in bed and they came in his room and they tried to smother him because they're trying to take him out because the devil is upset with him because he's, he's bringing about a change. He's, he's bringing about, amen, the holiness and righteousness, amen, within the body. Amen, they want to take him out, but tell him, God said he got a sickness unto death, but he shall not die. And guess what, brothers and sisters? I ain't dead yet, my God. Ah! In about six more months, seven months, in September, I turned 79. And I still got a little pep in my walk. I still got a little juice of where I'm going. Because I serve a God. Let me get back with this nurse. They wheel me in the operating room and they told me, they said, well, you won't go to sleep, but you won't feel nothing. And I'm looking at them like, okay, all righty. And I'm, I'm laying there and I'm, I'm praying. I'm, listen, some of y'all, you get to a point in life where you want to have faith and you want to trust God. But the writer says that, you know, early, those that seek him early, they're going to find him. My God, and I need some folk to seek him early. Amen. To cry unto him and ask him. And I'm laying there, and, and, and I'm trying not to be fearful. And, and the anesthesiologist, amen, walks up to me, and she says, uh, uh, you're going to be okay. And she looked at my chart. She says, you're a pastor, right? I said, yeah. And she said, you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. She walked away, and she came back. And she said, pastor, I need to tell you that Jesus got you. Now, now you think that's something. Then she walked around and, and she came back and she took my hand and she said, well, they're getting ready. Can we pray before they start? I said, you go ahead and pray. My God. And she began to pray. You know, Lord, you watch over him. This is your child. He, he belongs to you. And my God. And she ended up and said, and in the name of Jesus. Now, I don't know who she was or where she was, what she believed. But she said the right word in the name of Jesus. Two and a half hours, they extracted blood off my lungs, and hey man, they, 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 they couldn't get it all, and put me in ICU, and then moved me to the main campus at Yale, and I'm laying there all night long trying to figure out what, what has God up to. Somebody right now is going through something and trying to figure out what God is up to. I need to tell you, hold on. Huh? Just hold your peace. Huh? God's got you in the hollow of his hand. Then the chief of medical officer walked in my room and told me who he was. And the president, I was on the board for 23 years. And he said, well, the president want to come up, but we won't let her out of the office. But I just come to check on you. And he's looking at me. And he said, my God, you look good. 
I'm looking at this guy like, bro, hold up, <laughs> hold up. He said, oh, God, you look good. And I'm like looking at this, what is your problem? I'm saying in my mind, what is your problem? He said, do you know, amen, why we moved you over here? I said, no. He said, because we thought your heart was going to stop last night. And we brought you over here right by the operating room so we can crack open your chest and, and get your heart going again. He said, but you look so good. We're going to get you out of here because you look too good and things are going too well. I'm talking about somebody seeking God. I'm talking about somebody. Early, 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 will I seek him. Before the sun rises, I want to hear him. Amen. Before, amen, the man that the sun crests across the sky, I want to be able to touch the hem of his garment. My God. Now, if you think that's something, I'm laying in bed and had a nurse. She came in the room, and she said, uh, my name is Azuzo. I'm from the Philippines. And she was a little, from my point of view at the time, a little flippant. And I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, could I get a good nurse? I got this nurse. She come in, you know, okay, I'm going to take good care of you. I was like, oh, God, please, Lord, help me, Father. And she's just walking around. She says, I got to go out. I'm going to come back in. I'll be right back. You'll be okay. And she goes out and she comes back in. Brother Batowski. And when she comes back in, then she looks at me. And she writes her name on a board. I-Z-Z-O. Uzuzo, as he called it. And then she looked at me and said, you know what my name means in Filipino? And walking around the room. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I really don't care what your name means. It is not my point of interest what your name means. My point of interest is I'm laying in this bed. I want to go home. I can't. I can't get up and even go to the bathroom. And you want me to know what your name means in Filipino. You must be crazy. Lord, why do you give me such people as this? Can I tell you something? When you're going through something, quit questioning why God puts people in your path. Quit questioning that because you don't know. Because the next words that came out of her mouth, Brother Gonzalez, she looked at me and said, my name in Filipino is not going to tell you this. We just had a convention in Cincinnati, and my theme was uh, 1,000 people praying. And we had 1,000 people praying. We had like 3,000 people praying at 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, now, it's a year later, I'm laying in the bed, and she's talking about my name in Filipino means 1,000 women praying. I sat straight up in the bed. I said, do what? What did you say? She said, my name is 1,000 women praying. I said, what did you say again? She said, my name is 1,000 women praying. I'm telling you this. Uh, when we begin to seek God, uh, oh, I wish I could get somebody. In. Now listen, I'm not talking about running up and down the church. Uh, I'm not talking about jumping and shouting. Uh, but I'm talking about really uh, seeking God, uh, getting close to God. Uh, I'm talking about uh, getting at the hem of his garment. Uh, I'm talking about uh, getting on your knees uh, and crawling to God uh, and say, Lord, uh, if I I can but just touch uh, the hem of his garment. Uh, I shall be made whole. I'm talking about the saints of God rallying together uh, to call on the name uh, that's above every name. Now, I need some baptized believers just to shout glory. I'm good. My God, you got to understand. You got to understand. He wants to take you out. He wants to take you out. He doesn't want to see these children back here worshiping God. He doesn't want to see that. 
He wants to bring about discord and disharmony. He wants to get you guys, uh, amen, out there strung on drugs, uh, amen, running around, uh, tattooing yourself, uh, putting all kind of crazy stuff on you. That's what he wants. Uh, but God said, uh, if we would seek him, uh, if we would just cry out unto him, uh, if we would seek him, uh, he said, if you seek my face, uh, I just want to feel his presence. Solomon was awesome. Can I just be me? Okay, cool. You'll find out. Keep on living. You get to be 78 and a half years old, you're going to sit down in the middle of your sermon too. And catch your breath. And then kick it back up again. After you get that second win, my God, because I can preach just as well from here as I can from running up and down the thing. Because, see, I know who my father is. I know who is the Lord of my life. I know, see, I know who kept me and mama together, me and my girlfriend together for 56 years. Lord, I, I know who kept us together. It wasn't her and I, but it was the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. It was because, amen, when she got, amen, fed up, she went and prayed. When I wanted to walk out the door, I felt them telling me, get back in here. Good God Almighty. When I thought, amen, I could do something else, I felt and I heard them say, I gave you this woman. You better stick with her. You take care of her because that's your responsibility. Oh, I wish I had some folk in here who know what I'm talking about. Every morning, about three o'clock in the morning, I can count it. I don't have to look at the clock. Boom, my eyes open up. I'm like, again? All right, Lord, what do you want to say to me? What do you want to tell me? I found out he doesn't want me sometime, doesn't want to tell me anything. But he wants me to tell him how much I love him, how much I appreciate him, how grateful Oh, glory be to God. Jesus, oh, glory, 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 oh, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, my God, I felt something then, oh, glory be to God, I felt it going all the way through me, my God, God said, yeah, that's what I want. I want you to tell me how much you love me. I want you to tell me how much you care for me. I want you to tell me how good I am to you. I want you to tell me how thankful you are. I want you to tell me that I'm your Lord. I'm your God. I am the great I am. I got your Brooks. When I was in the hospital, I got a word. The word came from God and said, you're my son. Man, I got three sons. I love them dearly. I give them a fit sometimes, but I love them. I'm hard on them, but I love them. I fuss at them, but I love them. When I tell them I want something, they can tell you, I don't want to wait two or three minutes till you decide you want to get up and go in the room and get it for me. I'm looking at you like you're crazy, and they 50 some years old. But I said, look, I'm the head of this household. If I say I want it, go get it. Don't, don't question me. Don't ask me. We be talking some time, and they get to going off, and I say, hey, hey, did I ask you a question? No, I said, shut up. Just be still. Be quiet. They look at me and say, yes, sir. And they just, see, I, I love them for that. Uh, I, I appreciate, uh, amen, that God allowed me to put something in them uh, that would respect, uh, amen, who their father and who their mother was. Uh, my God, I love that. Uh, amen. And anything they need, uh, I'll help them out. Uh, whatever they need, uh, they know Pop's got it. Uh, all they got to do is come. Uh, we can go sign on a note. We can do whatever. Uh, I want to make sure you're whole. Uh, now, if I, uh, as a natural man, uh, would do that for my natural son, 
tongues. Oh, good God Almighty. What do you think the Lord of Lords is going to do for his child? Good God Almighty. What do you think God's going to do for somebody? My God. Top. I got to quit. I got to quit. I learned something else, too. I found out something else, too. At my age, I ain't got nothing to prove to y'all. And when I get through, I can go sit down. If you didn't get nothing, that's your problem. Because I got something. If y'all ain't got nothing out of this, I'm full. Good God Almighty. I got a belly full right now. My God. I hope you know. Good God. You know when you get your belly full sometimes and you're sitting back, sometimes you, you get that little gas pain and you just tap yourself and you get that good belch. In Europe, when you belch, it said that your meal was good. Now, if y'all enjoy this meal, I'm sorry. Dr. Bernard is coming. But honey, I'm enjoying this meal. My God, like I got Philly Mayon sitting on the table with a baked potato. My God, I got a card. The God seekers. The God seekers. Not the jumpers necessarily. Not the shouters necessarily. The God seekers. See, because the God seekers will come to God. Don't worry, I ain't going to stay up here long. And I'm taking off my coat. It's getting a little warm. Amen. But the God seekers, God said, who going to get up early? Who going to get up early? My God. I have a thing in the house, and they all know it. I tell them, I get up in the morning, I go downstairs, I walk in the kitchen. Don't even put the lights on. Wash my hands. Walk over to my Keurig. Hit on. We're not having a conversation. Who said it was a good morning? I didn't get my coffee yet. Go up and get my cup. Make my cup of coffee. I walk in the living room. Mother's upstairs still asleep. I walk in the living room. I got a little, got a little blanket. Take my blanket. Shake it out. Get my cup of coffee, sit on my couch, swing my leg up, put my blanket over me, look out the window, let the sun rise in, and just begin to tell God how much I love him, how much I appreciate him, how grateful I am. God, you woke me up this morning. See, somebody asked me, they said, it's good to see you. I said, it's good to be seen. Uh, I'm telling you, March the 3rd, uh, I'm going to have me a party. I'm going to rejoice uh, I, because uh, they said you shouldn't be here. Uh, one of the guys from the hospital called me two weeks later, uh, and he said this. He said, Ted, Ted. I said, yeah, man, how are you? He said, I just want to hear your voice. Uh, he said, but I got to tell you this. Uh, he said, it's only God. He said, if you were anybody else, your family would have been planning your funeral right now. He said, but God's got you. He's a Baptist deacon. He said, but God's got you, man. I'm telling you. When you seek God, when you cry out to God, then God will move on your behalf. Now, I, I, I got to go to my seat, but I'm going to challenge y'all right now. I need some God seekers. Uh, I need God seekers to jump up. Uh, I need God seekers to start crying out. Uh, I need God seekers to start calling them. Uh, I need God seekers uh, to start walking the aisle. Uh, I need God seekers uh, just to walk up and down uh, and say, but for the blood of Jesus, uh, where would I be? Uh, I need God seekers uh, just to be able uh, to do whatever. Uh, say, God, use me. Uh, use me for your glory. Uh, use me for your honor. Uh, use me, God. Uh, use me, God, till I'm used up. Uh, I need the God seekers. Uh, I need the God seekers. Ah, uh, uh, my God. Uh, where are the seekers of God? Uh, where are those who cry out? Cry out, Lord. Listen to me. Listen to me for a moment. 
Listen to me for a moment. The devil wants to stop the motion that God is putting into place. So what are you talking about, Bishop? Dr. Bernard, can you walk with me for a moment, sir? God has placed something in me and my brother's heart to see apostolics. Don't care where you are. Just come together. We didn't want to come together to judge you. We want to come together for fellowship. We want to come together for worship. I commend him. I commend him because he's been relentless in pursuing it. All of us but for the grace of God would be lost. If God didn't help us, we all would fail him. But this man and myself have been standing in the gap trying to get others to come see. But what the devil wants to do, he wants to separate us. He wants to keep us over here with our little isms and schisms and schisms and wisms and, and all of that stuff. But I need some God seekers who say, God, draw them together. Draw them together in fellowship. Uh, draw them together uh, in brotherhood. Uh, join them together in unity. Uh, because a link linked together uh, is a strong link. Uh, come here, Brother Pukowski. Uh, come here, Brother Hanson. Uh, my God. Uh, grab him on his arm. Uh, John, come over here. Uh, my God. Uh, come on, my brother on the end. Uh, come on, yeah, come on. Uh, when we do like this. Uh, Grab him on the end. Uh, when we grab each other, uh, you see, uh, now we can sometimes get pushed uh, and we'll get pulled. Uh, we get pushed uh, and we get pulled. Uh, but when I slide this way, uh, my brother John got me. Uh, when I go this way, uh, Dr. Bernard got me. Uh, the two on the end uh, is anchoring. Uh, I'm telling you this. Uh, God wants to see his people uh, seek him uh, so that there's fellowship uh, and unity uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, the God seekers. Rise, God seekers. Uh, get up, God seekers. Uh, let's go forward, God seekers.
you we give you glory oh what a wonderful and powerful presence of God here in this sanctuary amen in your own way would you express what Bishop told us the Lord called for each morning your love your declaration of love to our Father wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, we love you, we worship you, we adore you, we magnify your name, Jesus. I give you praise, I give you glory, I exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I appreciate so much Bishop's message from the Lord. He wasn't here today. He did not hear postpone the wedding. Unexpected beginnings are the declaration confirming the war that we find ourselves in. But as God always does, the Holy Ghost has interwoven all of the words that have come and given a clear and a certain sound to the church for this hour. I'll never forget the awesome privilege as a student at Indiana Bible College. If you'd like to return to your seats, if you're able, you're welcome to do that. And Pastor Mooney, the president of Indiana Bible College, interviewed Bishop Emmy Golder and Bishop N.A. Urshan, and they lamented the fact that the apostolic movement had missed a moment of standing together during the civil rights crises of the 60s and 50s. And I so appreciated the words of those incredible bishops that left an indelible imprint on the apostolic movement as Bishop Golder and Bishop Urshan did. And their words echoed in my heart, mind, and spirit. And following George Floyd's murder, that next week the Holy Ghost impressed me to have a hope and healing prayer rally on the lawn of our state capitol. I knew it could be easily misunderstood. It was, a, of course, a challenging moment, pastoring a very multicultural church. My brother is a police officer. And just an impossible moment 
for our nation really to reconcile everything that had transpired and happened. But I called my good friends, Dr. Michael Bailey and Pastor Leroy Bailey, and they said, whatever you want to do, we're with you. We're going to do it together. Dr. Bailey, would you come up? I want you to greet this congregation in just a moment. Come right ahead. I didn't understand why nobody from the city of Hartford would return my calls, my emails, in spite of my very persistent efforts. Dr. Bailey serves as a chaplain on the Hartford Police Department. And finally, one of them called me from their private number and said, Look, we know you want to ask us to do something we can't tell you it's okay to do because it would violate current COVID guidance. But here's what we'll tell you. If you'll call your prayer rally a prayer protest rally, we really want you to have your rally on the lawn of the state capitol because there's another group that's forming a rally and wanting to do a march that we fear will be very destructive to our city. And it's at the same time that you're telling us you feel to have your hope and healing rally. And so Dr. Bailey and, and, and Pastor Perry pulled up his sound system and, and we gathered in that park and we had about 30 pastors join with Dr. Bailey and First Cathedral and the Pentecostals of Greater Hartford said, in this moment of great division and strife, we aren't going to miss the moment, but we Jesus seekers are going to stand together as a model of racial unity for the world that is a difference and a contrast to the culture of this world because we're not citizens of this earth. We've made citizenship in an eternal kingdom. Jesus' name has been called over our life. And my dear brother and I got to stand together. I always feel more solid when I stand next to him. I've gained a few pounds, but I don't have all the muscle he's got yet. And we stood together in that moment and we called the name of Jesus over our state capitol. And we prayed in the name of Jesus together. And do you know that rally that they feared would be destructive? It stopped three or four blocks short of the state capitol, and it didn't make its way all the way to its final hope for destination because there were people there united in the name of Jesus, standing in the power of the name of Jesus, and it turned back the tide of what the enemy meant for harm. God turned it around for good, and that is what God wants to use his body for in this hour. Could we get a microphone for Dr. Bailey as he greets his congregation? Would you give him another warm winter fire welcome? Take your liberty. Come on, give God praise. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the one that can save. The one that redeems. I'm, that's cute. Some of you still act like the Lord didn't save you. If he did something for you, you ought to be on your feet. You ought to have your hands lifted. And you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, I know that I may not be denominationally apostolic, but I believe in the apostolic anointing. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I believe the Holy Ghost is indeed moving, not only in this facility, but outside of this facility, in the parking lot. And not only in the parking lot, but in this community, in this city, in this state, wherever you're from, if you have the Holy Ghost, he's moving. Glory be to God. Giving honor to Bishop Potoski and to all these wonderful bishops and pastors and to all of you, my brothers and sisters.
in Christ. I kept sitting on the side and I was talking to the Lord and all the water fell. Praise the Lord. But one of the things, thank you so much, Bishop. One of the things that I kept thinking about a song in my spirit, I'm not much of a singer, so forgive me. But I kept singing hallelujah. Y'all know that song. Come on, sing it with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, sing. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it like you mean it. We're talking to him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Lord, you're worthy. Then I'll take my seat. Come on, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Lord, you're worthy. Everybody to get up on their feet and sing it if you're able. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. One more time, one more time. I promise you, I'll sit down. Come on. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Are worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Come on, give him the highest praise. Come on. Lord, you're worthy. All right, hallelujah. Come on, one last time. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, it's the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him the greatest praise you gave him all winter fire. Open up your mouth. Let heaven hear you. Let heaven hear you. Let heaven hear you. Come on, y'all can do better than that. I said, let heaven hear you. Let them know we're grateful. We're thankful. We bless His holy name
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we bless your name. you may be seated again for just a couple more moments I want to just give some recognitions here before we take a very important action that always releases an increased dimension of supernatural power first I would like all of the sponsors each of the levels the friends the champions the founders level sponsors of winter fire if you would stand and just I want to give appreciation to this group of elders, of pastors, of bishops. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your faithful standing with Winter Fire and your service and leadership. Love you and appreciate you. So honored. And the second group I'd like to recognize as a large group is all the church planners. Would all of the North American missionaries and church planners Stand, thank you, Brother Thompson and North America Missions for making it possible for so many of our church planners to be here all across this congregation. We're so grateful for your presence here and believe that what God is pouring into you and investing in you is going to impact your community and reap great dividends of harvest, encouragement, through all the mountains and valleys of church planning, that God and His reminders that He has given us and what He has imparted already this week and what yet remains to be imparted, that He will continue to position and prepare us for those moments of destiny that lie just on the horizon. Suddenly, He desires to do some great things. Sometimes he gives a promise and it takes many, many years. But then when he acts, he acts suddenly. Amen. And we're grateful for the promises of God. Amen. We have six missionaries here that I am aware of. And I'm going to ask them to come. And as they come, a usher is going to come and stand near them. And I would like Brother Scott Grant to come and stand right over here. I think we've got six monitors. And so if you would stand on that broad step and an usher will come and stand with you. Brother Scott Grant is a missionary church planner to greater Montreal, the metro Montreal area. And God is planning and doing a great work in Montreal. Quebec City, thank you. And so the ushers are going to stand right on the main floor in front of the missionaries. And as, let me finish calling these great missionaries up. Brother Kyle and Sister Amanda Kelly are here, missionaries to Wales. And their family, their boys are here with them. I believe God wants to shake Wales one more time. That impacts the entire globe with a revival and harvest. And if you would slide down even a little bit closer to Brother Grant so we can fit all six. Brother and Sister Lucas are here. I'm not sure if their whole family, but if Brother and Sister Lucas would come and stand next to the Kellys. They are missionaries to the country of Japan.
I was amazed to find this out. Naturally, the number one language here in the United States is English. And as Pastor Perry tried to demonstrate, most of us English speakers, Spanish is far worse than Spanish speakers English. But Spanish is the number two language in the United States. If you know the answer to this, just hold your peace and let the surprise be on everyone else. In your mind, just guess what's the number three language, the third most common language in the United States. You've got your guess in your mind. You don't get to phone a friend. It's just in your mind. I love that we have some from the MCM Department of the United Pentecostal Church, Multicultural Ministries, we have our first missionaries to the deaf community. American Sign Language is the third most common language in the United States. Brother and Sister Swan, would you come and stand right here? And God has called Brother and Sister Swan to help churches all over the United States birth daughter works that will reach the American deaf community and use their ministry and their powerful testimony. If you get a chance when he comes to your state, you're going to be blessed to hear his testimony and his ministry. And I know it'd be a great, great blessing to you. We also have here going to the country of Malaysia, brother and sister Vestal, brother Lonnie and sister Vestal. Brother and sister Lonnie Vestal, if you would come. You can make it this way, going to the country of Malaysia. Their daughter is here with them as well. And we're grateful to have these missionaries going to the country of Malaysia. And if they would come and stand right there. And the sixth missionary that we're privileged to have with us tonight is Brother Matt Yader, who is going to the country of Israel. Another one with such a powerful testimony. Some of you might think you've got disqualifiers that limit how God can use you. Brother Yader is blind, but God called him to reach a nation and God is gonna use him in apostolic ministry to impact the country of Israel and reach our brothers and sisters. Because someone who life might have said, you're disqualified, said, no, sir, no, ma'am, God is going to use my life, yield it and surrender to you. And so I'm asking for a sacrificial offering, not to benefit winter fire, but let's stand all across this congregation. And I'm asking for pastors, for business owners, individuals who would like to take on and sponsor you could take on all six for fifty dollars a month and it'd be the best investment you made all year because if you lay up treasure on earth moth and rust can corrupt it inflation can deflate it but when you lay up treasure in heaven i'm telling you it's one that has eternal reward and investment And so as this worship team worships in song, in this entire first song, I'm asking pastors, let's all stand together. It's always easier to give when you're standing. You can reach your wallet. You can reach your pen. You can get your phone out and start writing down whatever you got to write down. But let me tell you what will really bless these missionaries is if they can leave winter fire with each of them having 30 new partners that say, I want to be a part of revival. If you're not partnering with a missionary, God can't bless your local church. If your vision isn't bigger than your local assembly, then your vision is too small. I'm trying to stay nice. 
but I do feel some kind of way about folks that can only give internally and can't give externally. And I know the strong percentage, I'll resist the urge of preaching to the choir too hard. But winter fire has broken the financial stronghold over and over again by rising to the occasion and giving sacrificially. So as the worship team sings this song, I'm asking for pastors, business owners, individuals to come and take partners and, and, and take the forms of partner and missions from these ushers that are standing in front of these missionaries. You can go back to your seat. You can fill it out. You can bring it right back up and give it to them immediately. Or after this first song, we're going to receive an offering of thanksgiving and of love offering to the Lord. And you could put it in there and the missionaries will get that at the circle desk out in the foyer after service. But let's make sure that every missionary leaves winter fire with 30 new partners. Three people on the worship team are standing with me. Winter fire, will you stand with me and say tonight, we're going to make sure these missionaries leave this weekend blessed with partners that will partner in finance and in prayer. Jesus seekers that are willing to give sacrificially to the kingdom. I want to pray a blessing over this sacrificial offering of partners here right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this congregation. And right now I simply ask that you would speak to every individual in this house. Holy Ghost, let us be obedient to your voice. Without any real spectacular fanfare, our long drawn out proceedings, your children simply hearing the voice of our Father and saying, yes, Lord, I will give so these can go. As an act of faith, an act of obedience, and an act of love. Ushers that will receive the offering, you can come and be in position. When the worship team transitions to the second song, you can begin to pass through this great congregation and receive the love offering of worship. That will be given and be a blessing to winter fire. But let's make our great offering and offering of partners to these missionaries. Let's worship God together. Pastors, won't you come as the worship team sings in praise and worship here right now. Jesus name.
light has come. Oh, the evening light has come. Hey, the evening light has come. It is the fact that God and Christ are one. Oh, say one, 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 one way to God. One way to God. One, one, one. one. Everybody say one, 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 say one, 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 one way to God. Say one, 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 one way to God. Say one, 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 one way to God. One way to God. Say baptized in Jesus. Hey, everybody, put your hands together. Yes, sir. How many of you remember this verse right here? It says this. We are often tossed and dribbling on the restless seas of time. Sober skies and howling tempests all succeed the bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, say, by, by and by. When the morning comes, the morning comes. Shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. 
to see King Jesus. I'm going to see King Jesus. Twelve gates to the city. Gates of pearls. Streets of gold. Oh, I'm going to sing about a shout. How I made it all. So everlasting life. Everlasting life. Hey. So everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Say yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. I got my ticket. Everlasting life. I've been washed in the blood, sanctified by the Spirit, and I'm made brand new. It's because of the cross, and it's because of the blood. All the blood of Jesus, all the blood of Jesus that washed my sins in the sea of forgetfulness. So everlasting life, everlasting life. He gave me power, power to walk right. Hey, he gave me power, hey, power to talk right. Everlasting life. Now somebody, anybody, everybody clap your hands. Anybody feel like having church tonight? Clap your head. If the Lord has been good to you, if God has made a way for you, let me see you clap your head. Hey, everlasting life. Everlasting life. Oh, oh, oh. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Can you wave your hands? If you got everlasting, can you do your things? If you got everlasting, can you leap for joy? Can you leap for joy? The joy of the Lord. Hey, everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Now somebody lose yourself and give it glory. If heaven is your home, let me see you clap your hands in the room. to stop for long we're gonna shout in victory at what God is doing right now if you didn't get to return your commitment your partner form you can give it in the offering as we worship the Lord let's keep worshiping him together the ushers will wait on you for the offering everlasting life hallelujah let's continue worshiping one more say say when we are Get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, say, when we all see Jesus, we will sing, eh, and just the house say, when we all say, when we all get to heaven, every nation, every tongue, every creed, when we all see, say, We'll sing one more time. Y'all sound good. Everybody say when we be when we all see she. Now can we shout about it like we are in heaven? Come on. Hey, say yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. How will you praise? When you get to glory, hey, how will you shout? When you get to glory, let me see you move your feet. Everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for everlasting life. For everlasting life. Everlasting life. I don't deserve it. Money couldn't earn it. 
but he gave it to me anyway. Not my good works, but because of the blood. But because of the blood. But because of the blood. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, everlasting, 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 yes sir, yes sir. Find you one person and ask them, say neighbor, say neighbor, oh neighbor, do you have everlasting life? Answer your neighbor, answer your neighbor, answer. Now ask them one more question, say neighbor, if you don't mind, can you help me? Praise Jesus, like we're in glory. Like we made it to heaven. Ask them, say, neighbor, how will you dance and how will you praise when you get to heaven? I'ma praise them like this. Hey, I'ma praise them like this. I'ma leap like this. I'ma shout like this. Say, yes, I got it. 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 Everlasting life. Say, do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Say, yes. Yes, I got it.
mighty in the Lord. If you've been washed in the blood, sanctified by the Spirit, if your sins have been washed away, lift up your hands and shout glory. Hey, 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 yeah. Come on, somebody praise him. The Lord is in this house. His spirit is in this place right now. He's moving all across this building. Come on, all across this room, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on, let's lift him up in this place one more time. Come on, somebody give him glory in this place. He's made his presence evident in this house. And how many know that suddenly he can move in your situation? The Lord is able to suddenly do a mighty work in your body, in your mind, in your soul, and in your spirit. Come on, all across this auditorium, lift your hands. Hey, hey. With lifted hands, we're ready for a brand new demonstration of your power. And we want more than stories. We're declaring and believing for it now. We'll prepare the atmosphere so you can be welcome here. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The moment that you walk in, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The moment that you walk into this room with lifted hands, we're ready. How many are ready for a brand new demonstration? Do I have a witness in this house? We want more. That story we're declaring and declaring and believing for it now. We'll prepare. Yes, we will. So you can be welcome.
Jesus is here. Come on, if you believe that, lift your voice. you lift your voice worship him all across this room if you believe that tonight come on if that's your testimony God I have faith and I know that as soon as you step into this room you can run a miracle in this building lift your hands and claim it right now in Jesus the 22nd year of winter fire and I don't have any earthly knowledge yet of the results but I sense in my spirit that a great sacrificial offering has gone forward to bless our missionaries could we give God an ovation of thanksgiving and praise for his provision and again if you did not fill out the partner form in time to slip it in the offering you could go to the circle desk in front of the elevator immediately after service and we will be sure to share those tonight at the end of service or tomorrow morning first thing we'll give them to our missionaries that are here with us as you're returning to your seats it's such such an awesome awesome privilege could we give this worship team another hand clap of appreciation? Also, I'd like to give our ushers and our greeters a hand. They're serving behind the scenes. You don't see the security usher, greeter, first impressions team. Thank you for your service behind the scenes. And we also like to give some love to Dr. Bailey and Pastor Leroy Bailey and the First Cathedral family, our brothers and sisters. We're so grateful for their friendship and the unity that we feel. Let's stand together. As you're standing, I've got to say, inspired by the stewardship group. Thank you, Brother Kent Russell and the incredible work that the UPCI Loan Fund is doing to bless the apostolic movement, both by investments coming in and by loans going out. So Winter Fire had to just try to match that giveaway. So I've got a Winter Fire coffee mug to the first person that'll come and get it. Oh man, you've got to move quick. I've also got a Winter Fire beanie cap. One more, there we go and a winter fire t-shirt, a long sleeve t-shirt. Whoa, keep on running. Watch out. If 
If you'd like a CD, a DVD, a recording, or any of these other products, you can stop at the Winter Fire Media Store as you're exiting the building on the right-hand side, where you also can register for the Judah Project. And we're so grateful for Brother Hoffey and the UPCI Music Ministries partnership with Winter Fire to bless worship teams all over the Northeast. Could we again appreciate Brother Hoffey and the UPCI Music Ministry and their investment in our worship teams? And I'll slide it in, Brother Hoffey. Even if you're incredibly awesome, can I remind you when Tiger Woods was dominating the sport of golf, he still had a swing coach. Even if you're incredibly awesome, you can come aside to this time of, of teaching and instruction and continuing learning, and God's going to bless you and bless others through you. So I hope you will take the opportunity to be at Judah Project in May or October that's coming up. All right, I'm done with all that. Didn't Bishop Brooks bless us tonight? Thank you, Bishop. I'm just claiming that same 78 and a half year old anointing as a part of my promise too, that I can still move like Bishop moving when I reach that place if the trumpet hasn't sounded. Our next speaker is no stranger to winter fire. He has faithfully invested in us in the Northeast through the vehicle of winter fire. He is near and dear to all of our hearts as a prolific leader that God has appointed for the apostolic movement in this hour. He's a missionary's kid. He's a church planner's kid. He is second only to the Apostle Paul for the number of books that he's written in the New Testament. Would you make welcome one more time Bishop Dr. David K. Bernard as he comes to minister the Word of God tonight. Bishop Bernard, take your liberty, minister in the Holy Ghost to us. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Are you glad to be back in church? Are you glad to be back in winter fire, praising the Lord? Amen. While you're standing, I'm going to the Gospel of Mark, read a couple of verses there. And uh, what we've had a wonderful time already. And uh, I thank Brother Petoskey as the chair here, also the district superintendent, Brother Perry, Brother Hanson. We appreciate the fellowship and partnership with Bishop Brooks over the years, the Apostolic Fellowship uh, Summit. And then he had a burden several years ago and spearheaded. We all worked together with the National Apostolic Day of Prayer. And so I'm thankful uh, for our ability to work together and to advance the kingdom of God. Now, I was planning to be finished by 930 at the latest, but it's I'm going to have to take a little bit longer than that, if that's okay. All right. Mark, reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. And this is the story of the man who had a son that was possessed by a demon that caused him to have seizures. And so if you read in Mark chapter 9, I've got the New King James here, verse 22 and 23. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I want to preach tonight for a few minutes from anything to everything. From anything to everything. You may be seated. Now, the demon had thrown this boy into the fire and into the water. Seems like the past few years we've been thrown into the fire and into the water. If it's not COVID-19, then it's political chaos, social turmoil, uh, unrest, economic crisis, now overseas Warfare, which may seem remote, but we have churches right there in Ukraine. So far, our latest reports, all the pastors are safe in their locations, but they do need our prayers because they're our brothers and sisters in Christ under direct attack. 
And so it seems like we've been through all these things. And I want to say before I get into the heart of my message, I feel like the Lord has put a few things on my heart for whatever time we have till the coming of the Lord. Now, I've been the general superintendent for 12 years, and uh, we had so many things that we've had to tackle over the years. When I became superintendent, I had a list of one page of about 30 immediate to-do things, and then I had a second page of about 30 long-term things. And so we've been able to accomplish those with the help of many people over the years. But there are two things that are on my heart that I feel like need to be pressed, and one is church planting and church growth, which we are continuing to do that. And I'm thankful to say that in the Northeast, you have that vision. Right here, the Connecticut District, as well as other districts, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and others, you are moving forward aggressively with net growth in church planting, and that's exciting. And I think a big part of that is what we're doing here at Winterfire. Amen. The other thing that I feel in my heart is making sure uh, of trying to shape and mold our church culture. And I think there's several things we've operated in the past kind of off the cuff. And God has blessed us, but I think we need to be more intentional in understanding our generation, understanding the cultural shifts, understanding the new generation. And so several things, I'm just going to hit these and move on. You can apply them in your own way. But, of course, we believe in scriptural authority and we believe in pastoral authority. But sometimes I see more authority and less servanthood. We need scriptural authority but servanthood leadership. So that's one thing that's really in my heart. Another thing but in line with that is if we're going to be leaders, and I'm talking to preachers, I'm talking about lay leaders, faithful saints, Leadership involves in accountability. You can't be a leader without accountability. There needs to be shared governance. It's not a lone ranger trying to accomplish heroic things. And that's my third point. We need unity now more than ever. We're facing a hostile culture. We're facing satanic attacks where the devil would like to throw us in the fire or throw us in the water. And the way we're going to survive and thrive is by working together. It's about team ministry. I appreciate the missionary who goes forth, but I appreciate even more if we could have a team to help that missionary where it's not just one person doing his or her own thing, but it's we work together to help that missionary achieve. And also, I've noticed over the years, sometimes we don't do very well in transitions. We do very well at starting things, but when it's time to hand them off, we have a hard time. Sometimes we have a problem with nepotism, and I'll clarify. My, I'm the son of both my mom and my dad were credential ministers of the UPCI for over 50 years. I've got two sons and a daughter. All three are credential ministers with UPCI. I've got a son-in-law who's a credential minister. So I'm not against family involvement, but I am saying you can't just have an entitlement, entitlement mentality where you hand things off to family because they're family. There's got to be spiritual qualifications. There's got to be commitment to apostolic doctrine. There's the people have to recognize the calling and accept the calling. There's, we, it's not about our personal family. This is not a hereditary monarchy. This is not a family business. This is the church of the living God. I'm all for involving family. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes a family member may be the best person to carry forward, but it needs to be the will of God. And we have got to give room for first-generation apostolics to rise to leadership. There's a place for first-generation and multi-generation. We need to partner together. And my next point is diversity and inclusion. Whether you're talking about race, ethnicity, male and female, young and old, First generation, multi-generation, we have to learn to make room for each other and one another. And somehow we've got to minister to our diverse community. 
The church needs to reflect the diversity of the society, and the leadership needs to reflect the diversity of the church. And if we do that, there's nothing that can stop us. And also, we need a healthy dose of Christian liberty. Now, if you know my books, you know I believe in apostolic doctrine. I believe in holiness. I may be more strict than most of you. But when it comes to things that are not scriptural requirements, we've got to give room for one another. We've got to respect one another. We can have personal convictions. Now, if scripture teaches it, that's enough conviction. I don't care if you have a personal conviction or not. If the scripture teaches it, that's a, that you, you need to follow that. That's conviction. But when it comes to our style of ministry and our personal choices, we've got to give room for people. We can't have litmus tests of who's the true conservative and who's the true apostolic when we're not in Scripture. To me, one of the big tests of being scriptural is one of the big issues is tailbearing and gossip. And if you're a conservative tailbearer and gossiper, then you're not conservative. You're ultra liberal because you're outside the Bible. Now, I just threw that in for extra. That's not even part of the message. So, I'm just telling you, I feel my role is to help shape our culture so that we are attuned to our times. We can set aside the the personal flaws that will hold us back, and we can move forward into true apostolic revival and see growth and see us change our community and change our world. So yes, we have many challenges. And as I read the story in Mark 9, here's a man who had a son with an incurable disease caused by demonic forces. We might diagnose diagnose it today as epilepsy. But it was demonically induced. It had physical effects. The boy would have seizures uncontrollably at uh, different times, and he was at great risk of harming himself or even dying because of these seizures. In desperation, the man took his son to the disciples. They prayed for him, but nothing happened. Finally, Jesus came on the scene, and I want you to notice the man had very little faith, but he did have faith. He had enough faith to come to Jesus. So, we look at a pagan society, a secular society, a postmodern world, and as apostolics, we are saddened by the gross spiritual darkness, the compromise and the distortion of basic values. And if we're not careful, we can be very negative toward our culture. But when somebody makes their way toward God, they may be a far off, but if there's a little bit of faith, God will work on that. A bruised reed, he won't break. A smoking flax, he will not quench. And I will tell you this, we don't need to magnify the power of the devil. You look at the demon-possessed people in Scripture, like the man in the tombs that was so full of demons that nobody could hold him back. Nobody could bind him with chains. He would break every chain, tear off his clothes. But he could come to Jesus. All the demons could not stop him from coming to Jesus. He could not deliver himself. He was bound. He was tormented. But even one unsaved man that had a will that wanted to be delivered, the devil could not stop one sinner who wanted to be delivered. He didn't have the Holy Ghost, but he turned whatever, he couldn't even articulate it, but something in his heart came toward Jesus instead of running away from Jesus. Somewhere deep in his heart, he wanted to be set free. He couldn't set himself free, but he could come toward Jesus. And Jesus took that little bit of unarticulated faith and said, I rebuke you and be gone and delivered him. So, the devil is powerful but very limited. If there's just a little bit of faith that comes in contact with God, that's enough to overpower and thwart all the power of the enemy. So here's a man. He only had small faith. 
if you can do anything. He's not really imagining great things. He's just hoping that Jesus could do something. If you could just do some one thing. He had low faith. Why was his faith so low? Well, first of all, the severity of the problem. It wasn't a headache. It wasn't trivial. It was a major life-threatening condition of demonic origin. Also, the duration of the problem. When Jesus asked a few questions, he found out this boy had been afflicted like this from when he's very small for many years. And then the inability of the disciples. He had already tried the church. Nothing happened. How could you have much faith after that? The disciples of Jesus couldn't do the job. In fact, they were arguing or debating or discussing, how come we couldn't do this? So it became a source of theological discussion rather than spiritual action. Now, I don't have time to draw all the parallels, but hopefully you can make some analogies and applications today. Have you ever faced a problem that was really severe, not trivial? Have you ever faced a situation of long duration that's been so long you're losing hope? Have you faced a situation where it seems like the disciples didn't really have the answer? The church didn't really have the answer. You prayed and you consulted and you counseled, but still there seemed to be no answer. And you get bogged down into the theology of why and why not. And why can't we do this? And what's going on? And what's the solution? Maybe we need a new technique. Maybe we need a new approach. Maybe we need a new revelation. But here's the key. He had enough faith to come to Jesus. Jesus, Master, Lord, can you do something? Well, Jesus responded in a very positive way. If you can believe, all things are possible. Jesus trying to expand his faith. The man was just holding on, can you do anything? Can you do something? Can you do one thing? I'd be happy to get just a little bit of relief. I'd be happy to get one touch. I would be happy to get one glimmer of hope. And Jesus saying, don't think small. If you're going to come to me, don't just come with one little thing. You come to me with all things. Don't, don't ask for an improvement of your bad condition. Ask for deliverance. Tonight, the Lord is trying to expand our faith. Now, the man was honest. He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Now, in some people's theology, that's enough to write them off right there. You know, if you're sick... You're not supposed to admit you're sick. You're supposed to say, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I do not have a headache. I'm not suffering. And that's your key to victory. That's not really scriptural. We should be honest and admit the problem. And then have faith to bring our problem to God and believe that God can overcome the problem. Now, you might not like that guy's prayer. You might criticize his prayer. But he did get an answer. So Jesus liked his prayer. You might as well be honest with God. He knows what you're thinking anyway. Who are you trying to fool just by a fake attitude? Now, I don't mean we should be negative. I'm not trying to argue for a little faith. I'm just saying be honest with where you are. If you only have a little faith, if you're struggling, if you have questions, fears, doubts, if you're mad at God, whatever, you might as well go ahead and be honest to God. And then when you've done that, make a decision of faith. Despite my poor attitude, by, despite my low faith, bes, bes, despite my bewilderment, bewilderment, despite my lack of understanding of the situation, despite my inability to figure this out theologically, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I'm here at winter fire. Lord, I do believe. Lord, I do worship you. Lord, I do praise your name. And that's enough for something to happen. Because you see, faith starts growing. And in a conference like this, in a service like this, remember, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17, faith can begin to grow. 
you know the well-known passage, Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people, if my people will pray, if my people will humble themselves, if my people will call upon my name, then I will hear, then I will heal. If you will, I will. God's just looking for somebody to take a step of faith. God's looking for somebody to pray a prayer of faith. God's looking for somebody to say yes, no matter how inadequate, no matter how simple, no matter how feeble, no matter, just get up enough courage to say, I believe, Lord, I'm praying, Lord, I have a vision of what you want to do. All things are possible to him that believes. So this is just a very simple message today, but what I'm saying is let your faith grow from something, anything, to everything. All things are possible. If you're a missionary, if you're a church planter, if you're a Sunday school teacher, if you are a youth leader, or you teach a Bible study, or you're trying to win a soul, and if you're not doing any of that, then you better start doing something. I hope I've covered everybody. If you're just saying, I want to win one soul, that's great. But in your mind, think, if I win that one soul, they have family. They have friends. If I could win one soul, I could win ten souls. If I could teach one Bible study, I could teach ten Bible studies. If I could get one new family in the church, I could get 10 new families in the church. Go from anything to everything. Don't think small. Don't think little. You say, well, we're in the Northeast, the most pagan part of the country. So what? God specializes in places that don't know anything about God. God can work in pagan environments. Yes, the apostolic church started in the Jewish community, Bible-based, but it exploded out of that into the Gentile world. When it got to the Gentile world, they said, these are the people that are turning the world upside down. That was in the Gentile community. I want you to know, in the pagan first century Roman Empire, full of all kinds of immorality, yet God moved in amazing ways, and the apostolic church was established and grew in the Gentile world. Study Greco-Roman culture. Not only did they allow abortion, they had infanticide. Child was born, they didn't want it, they just stuck it outside to die or to be taken as a slave or a prostitute. That was accepted in the culture. As far as all kinds of sexual immorality, that was accepted today. We have a little more technology than they had back then. But the Emperor Nero, in an act of rage, hit his favorite wife, Papea, killed her. He was so remorseful over that that he found a teenage boy, dressed him up as a girl, and married him. That was the Roman emperor. We haven't quite gotten that way in the U.S. government, but we are starting to get close, aren't we? With the promotion of all the exact opposite of the Word of God. Do you see the devil's plan? If you read Genesis 1, you see God's plan. God created everything good, created a man and a woman, so the devil attacks marriage. But he's not content to stop there. So then he attacks sexuality, a natural affection, but he's not content to stop there. Then he attacks what it means to be a man and a woman. He's trying to go back and reverse everything in the created order, reversing Genesis 1 all the way. But I want you to know the church is standing as a witness for God's plan. We're not full of hate and bigotry. We love souls. But we have power to minister in this ungodly culture. Don't think small. Don't give up. Don't be intimidated. But you think if God can do one thing, then God could do ten things just as easy as one thing. If God can do anything, God can do everything. So your faith can grow from anything to everything. 
So when the father said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, then Jesus answered that prayer, rebuked the demon, and healed the boy, and then explained to his disciples, here's your problem. You're the ones that need faith. That, that poor man that didn't know much, we were able to get him enough faith to come to Jesus. But the reason why the disciples couldn't do more is because they lacked faith. So we might focus on the man who had such weak and inadequate faith. But Jesus was focusing on the gospel workers. You are the ones that need to stand up and help a man like this. He only has a little faith. But if you will join with it, then all things are possible. In fact, if you had enough faith like a, a mustard seed, you could say, remove the mountain and nothing would be impossible to you. It's the same story, Matthew 17. So Jesus performed the miracle. I believe we as the apostolic movement, and since I know more about the UPCI, I'll be more specific. We as the UPCI, we are at the threshold of great and mighty things. I know we've always preached that, but there's a shift in the spirit. Do you sense a shift in our culture? I think COVID has accelerated everything, hasn't it? It's made everything 10 times worse. It's almost as if the devil is not patient anymore. He's going to speed up the process. Something in the Bible about that. The devil, when does the devil become more active? When he knows he doesn't have much time left. So when you look at the rapid decline of the culture, from a human perspective, it's very discouraging. But from a spiritual perspective, read the signs. It means the devil's getting scared. The devil knows he doesn't have much time. The devil's working overtime because he knows his time is almost up. Now look at it. If the devil thinks there's going to be great revival, and God said in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, if God thinks there will be great revival, then we're the only ones left. If we'll have enough faith to believe, even revival. We will have revival. Let's go from anything to everything. It's time to go from something to all things. It's time to believe God for great and mighty things. So COVID has accelerated everybody's fears and feelings. And I think there's something about the increase in violence and all that. It's just the whole culture stirred up. Well, God's people need to get equally stirred up. Now, I'll use the example of finances, which in, in some ways is the least, but it's, it's a measurable thing. And I mentioned this at our general conference, that who would have thought after a year of COVID, when it all hit, we were wondering if we were going to really survive. We're all hunkered down, trying to cut our spending because what's going to happen? Nobody knows. And right now, with inflation and economic turmoil and war in Europe, we and oil prices skyrocketing, we still don't know what's going to happen. So, as a general superintendent, naturally I was concerned what's going to happen to the ministries of the UPCI if everybody withdraws and hunkers down and protects and and you got to protect your home base. Obviously, every pastor needs to do that. So what's going to happen to all the missionaries and all the missions and, and all the projects? And we saw a little bit of a slowdown, but then we started seeing a pickup. And last year at this time, with our record North American missions offering, more than any in our history, $6 million. And that was shocking. And then the next offering that came along was children's ministry, another record, almost 2.5 million. Then the next offering, the ladies offering, another record, 4.3 million. And then the next offering, the youth, 6.7 million. In the meantime, Global Missions had record all year long and the largest single donor in their history, 1.3 million. Now, one record offering would be a miracle. But in the midst of COVID, in the midst of social unrest, in the midst of political turmoil, to break every record month after month after month, 
that's just the that's just the financial side. But in the realm of the spirit, God has also been breaking barriers. God is giving revival. God is helping us plant churches. God has given us a vision for souls. God is opening new doors and mission fields. And I promise not to steal the thunder of North American missions, but they're getting ready to announce their offering. And I'll just tell you, the trend is continuing. Is that fair enough, Brother Thompson? I didn't violate anything, did I? You are going to be amazed. We're here, we're praying, oh God, can you do anything? Oh God, can you just give us a decent offering? Oh God, can you just help us survive one more year? God say, why are you just asking for something? Why are you just asking for one thing? Why are you just asking for an increment? Why don't you ask for a miracle? Why don't you ask for deliverance? Why don't you ask for miraculous supply? It's time to believe God for everything. So I've come to a close. Like I said, it's just a very simple thought. But I believe God could put something in your spirit right now. In your local assembly, in your family, in your ministry. What do you really need as the next step? But then, here's what I'm challenging you. Don't just pray for the next incremental step. Pray for the big vision that maybe you haven't told anybody about. Maybe for the big vision that you've barely begun to articulate to yourself because it seems incredible. Now, I'm not saying it's all going to happen overnight. I'm certainly not wanting you to be egotistical or foolhardy or foolish. But I'm saying, can you hear from God? Not just a projection on your calculator of the next step. Not, I believe in planning, but there's time to go beyond our ability into God's ability. Because when our ability ends, God's ability begins. Let's stand right now. I believe it's time for somebody in this audience, some pastor, some Bible study teacher, some saint of God, it's time for you to go from one thing to many things. From something to all things. From anything to everything. I feel a prophetic spirit right now. God is speaking to you. Heed the call. What is God telling you to dream about? What is God giving you a vision of? What is God telling you to pray for? It's time to believe God for everything. It's time to move from anything to everything. It's time to move from one thing to all things. It's time to say, Lord, I believe. And whatever bears in the way, go ahead and admit it. Lord, help my unbelief. But at the end of the day, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to move toward you. All things are possible to those who believe. Would you come and pray right now? If you want to move from anything to everything, why don't you take a step of faith? If you don't come, that's okay. You could, you could step in the aisle or you could pray where you are. But I want us to respond to the Word of God. And tonight, let's move from anything to everything. Let's believe God for the impossible. Let's believe God for a breakout. Let's believe God for a breakthrough. Let's believe God for all things. All things are possible to those who believe.
say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is a way through We've heard the tides will never change haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we
for it tonight are you allowing your faith to grow from anything to everything I can definitely feel faith rising in this place in one of our pre-conference prayer meetings the Lord allowed us to see that there were angels that were standing in rank and file right here on this property and in this building preparing for what God was going to do in this conference And I've been kind of sitting back, wondering when they're going to really activate. But it's going to happen tomorrow. Something's going to break in this region, and the angelic armies of God are going to be dispatched. On the behalf of every church planter, on the behalf of every prospective church planter, on the behalf of every pastor who's been discouraged, on the behalf of every pastor who's been about to give up, those angelic armies are going to go with you when you leave this place. There is going to be something that transpires tomorrow that is absolutely going to unleash a warfare in the spirit realm that is going to bring us victory. And I'm not just talking about a little bit of victory, but I'm talking about a, a neck crushing victory when we walk out of this place with our foot literally on the throat of the enemy. Taking his weapons and using them against him when we leave this place. So as we get ready to close this service, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord one more time. And I know you're looking at me like, why you got to close the service? Well, we all want to be back for tomorrow for what God is going to do. And we got to respect, we got to be out of this building by 11 o'clock. And so what I want you to do right now is I want you to just seal everything that has happened today and, and, and what's getting ready to happen tomorrow by faith. I want you to reach out one more time and say, Lord, I believe it. Lord, I believe that we're walking out of this conference with victory. And I believe tomorrow, God, you're going to finish the work that you started. And it's going to spread throughout this region. And it's going to lose something that's going to spread throughout this country. Lord, I believe. It's not just faith for anything anymore, but it's getting ready to be faith for everything. It's not just faith for something anymore, but it's going to be faith for everything and anything and, and all things that we need and all things that God has promised. It's not going to be just a little bit from this moment forward, but God, we're believing for everything and for all things. So I pray, God, that we would take what we've received already in this conference. And Lord, we would uh, take it with us uh, from this place. And we come back tomorrow uh, at the level of faith that we're at right now. But God, you're going to take it and you're going to multiply it uh, even more as we leave and as we sleep tonight. Uh, and as we're fellowshipping in the restaurants or wherever we may go tonight. But when we arrive on this place tomorrow, there's going to be an activation of angelic armies uh, that are going to begin to release some things in the spirit that is going to absolutely break the back of the enemy won't you clap your hands one more time to the Lord hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Amen. It's always hard to leave a place in a, when we got such a manifest presence of God that it's here, but I'm going to ask you to respect First Cathedral, all their wonderful hosting and everything, and they've got to get this place cleaned up so we can be ready for tomorrow. So please, you are dismissed in Jesus' name. Please try to be out of this sanctuary as soon as you can. Amen. God bless you. Let's be back here tomorrow. The doors will open about 930. All of our sessions and services start at 10 tomorrow. Amen. Be back and ready for what God is going to do. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.